All right, today we're going to talk about frequency masking a little bit, and I'm going to show you a simple, easy technique to help find competing frequencies and decide where to cut. And this technique is interesting because it doesn't involve any boosting. Now, typically when we're dealing with competing frequencies between instruments, we're making a little dip in one where we want to boost another to kind of rectify the masking a little bit. And that works, it's a great method, but a lot of times you can resolve it by simply cutting and not boosting. Then we may not have to compromise so much about which one stays in the foreground and which one gets pushed to the background. So this is a great little masking technique. It doesn't work on everything all the time, but it's definitely a cool thing to know about. And it's also some good ear training and it's quite a bit of fun too. So let's dive right in and take a listen. Pianos are one of the classics for masking. They take up the entire frequency spectrum, so they can mask pretty much anything. And an acoustic guitar is typically occupying the range of the vocal and definitely competing with the piano. So let's take a listen to this little loop here and listen to the acoustic guitar and the piano. So you can hear that there's a little masking going on between the piano and the acoustic. It's not terrible. We have some decent separation. But I think you'll see that with a little bit of strategic subtractive EQ in the right places, the separation between these two instruments will open up pretty noticeably. So here's our acoustic. Now. When we're normally cleaning up a track, you might sweep around and find resonant frequencies that you don't like. So this masking technique is really similar, only what we're going to do is we're going to sweep around in both the piano and the acoustic, and instead of listening to resonant frequencies in each one that we might want to reduce, we're going to focus our ears on both instruments as a whole at the same time. And as we sweep around with some subtractive EQ, we're gonna see if we find any spots where they sound more separated with those frequencies removed. So we'll start on the guitar side. pull up the spectrum analyzer. So here's 3K. And there's 4K. And there's 5K. So you can tell right in here that both of these instruments, they're both fairly dominant in this range, which is to be expected, but they're not necessarily masking each other up here. Now, the acoustic up here at 8K definitely has more presence cutting through than the piano does, and there's nothing wrong with that. But what I'm getting at here is I don't think our high mids are so much of the issue. And one of the principles of masking is that masking tends to affect things uphill from it. So wherever the real competition in the frequencies is, will make the clarity more difficult in the frequencies above that region. That's just how masking works with the human ear. So that's something to keep in mind. But it's useful to hop into a spectrum analyzer and sweep around and see at which frequencies you hear one instrument more dominant than the other, or if they're both clearly muddying each other up in any specific spot. Now, low frequencies can be a real problem with masking as well, and pianos produce a lot of low-end energy. That's all normal, but right around in here, at around the 150, we might want to take out a little bit more of the guitar there. And we definitely have them stepping on each other more in the mid-range. So I'm thinking somewhere around 550, 650, somewhere in here, we might want to take a look. 
So if I do decide to take more out of this guitar somewhere down in here, then I might want to go back after this and adjust my high pass filter and back off on it just a touch if the acoustic is just sounding too thin. Now, this is a rhythm guitar in the mix, so it's going to be on a little on the thin side, and I'm leaving the bassier frequencies for, you know, the drums and the bass and the low end of the vocal. That's going to be more necessary than this acoustic, because it's not a lead acoustic. It's just a rhythm. So let's listen to both of these together. Now we're gonna do subtractive EQ and sweep around the low region. And this EQ on the right, this is on the acoustic. And as we sweep, we're gonna listen around and see if we find an area where they sound more separated and more clear from each other. right about 160 hertz. And when I remove 160 from the acoustic, I definitely hear the piano and the acoustic sound more separated from each other. Now, obviously I'm not gonna take this much out, but let's bypass these and compare it back and forth. So we're gonna back off on this. And we normally do cut narrow and boost wide. I'm gonna back off on this and widen the cue and listen as I move the cue around to the separation between these two. Pass again. All right now, let's sweep around on the piano. That's 700. This is right around 600. Yeah. Yeah, that's 695. This is 695 accented in the piano. I'm gonna bypass both these. Yep, I can definitely do with a little less of that. This is 695, right around 700. Let me broaden this Q and see how much I can get away with. These EQs do not have auto gain, so when we subtract, we are taking away overall volume and the EQ is not making up for it in and of itself. So if I need to nudge a fader up and down after this, I will. Yeah, I'm gonna make both of these more dramatic just so we can hear the difference a little more easily. They definitely sound more like two separate instruments with these frequency ranges taken out a little bit, a little attenuation there. And we would make these final decisions in the context of the mix.
Not only do we get more separation with these added frequencies removed from each one, we also don't really need to boost in the opposite region of these. Like if I'm reducing 700 in the piano, I could boost 700 in the guitar to increase the separation, but I don't want to boost the guitar in 700 because it's going to give it that kind of nasally quality and it's going to increase 700 overall in the mix, which I don't want and decreasing 150 on the acoustic. I don't necessarily want to boost 150 on the piano because I want that region to be as open as possible for the snare drum and the bass guitar and the vocal. Yeah, nice and easy. Don't forget to use the spectrum analyzer to kind of help you out. It can be good to get a visual on there, but it's also really good to do this blind, to sweep around and listen to the relation of things with your eyes closed. And of course, we want to make sure that if we decide to make this cut in these two instruments, that it's not compromising those instruments. But I think you can hear that they actually both sound better in of themselves with these extra frequencies removed, and the mix sounds better as a whole as well. And like I said, there is nothing wrong with boosting, but if I boost the piano or the guitar at 1K, it may make them sound better against each other, and it may make one of them sound better in of itself, but what else is at 1K that I am now competing with? So yeah, if you can do it with just subtractive EQ, then it's easier to maintain the overall balance in your mix. But well, hope you like that. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll catch you all on the next one.